Next, I'd like to discuss the concept of yield management, and in particular, the concept of overbooking. Now, overbooking is pretty common in, in uh, the service industries, in particular airlines overbook, uh, hotels and hotels, and uh, even rental companies, car rental companies overbook. And let's say in this problem, in this example, we own a hotel and we're considering uh, uh, overbooking. And when we've had uh, full reservations, we've tracked the number of no-shows that have occurred. So uh, let's say that we've got zero no-shows, everybody shows up on the reservation, one no-show, two no-show, and three no-shows. And the frequency that we've measured is that 18 nights we had zero no-shows, 36 nights we had one, and so on. And then we can calculate the probability of these no-shows. So 20% of the time we have zero no-shows, 40% of the time we have one no-show, 30% of the time we have two, and 10% of the time we have three no-shows. So because of these no-shows, it might make sense for us to overbook. So if we have, say, for example, 100 rooms, we might, might want to book 102 reservations, considering that there's a 30% chance that two of them won't show up. Well, of course, if we overbook by two and everybody shows, we'll be overbooked by two rooms that we'll have to pay for and find a compensation for them, find another room. So the question becomes, what is the optimal level of overbooking then in this example? So let n be the number of no-shows, x be the number that we decide to overbook. So over here we'll calculate the cumulative probability distribution in this way. n is less than x, the number of no-shows is less than the number of overbooked. If we have uh, zero no-shows and zero overbooked, we don't have a problem. So the probability of that, n less than x, is zero. Uh, the cumulative then, 0.2, comes in here. 0.2 plus 0.4 is 0 0.6. 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.9. Now these are the probabilities that the number of no-shows is less than what we've overbooked is, and in that case we're in trouble. So for example, if we overbook by one, and we have zero no-shows, the probability is 20%, then we'll be overbooked by, by one. And we'll have to compensate. So there's a formula. First, let's assume that the profit we get from these rooms is $50. The cost for overbooking is $100. That might be the cost that we have to pay one of our competitors to, uh, to, uh, uh, to host the, the guests that we've overbooked. So the formula is the optimal number of no-shows. The probability is n uh, less than x is less than or equal to c sub u, where c sub u is the cost of underbooking divided by c sub u plus c sub o, where c sub o is the cost of overbooking. So in this example, we had the cost of underbooking was $50 lost profit, divided by $50 lost profit, plus $100 cost of overbooking. So the optimal probability is 0.33. And what we do with that probability, see where it, it lands up here relative to these probabilities, and you'll see that 0.33 lies in between 0.2 and 0.6. So we always go down, so 0.33 down to 0.2, that tells us in this example the optimal number of overbooking should be one room. All right, let's calculate the associated costs if we overbook by one. Uh, first, we'll calculate the cost of no overbooking, so we can compare the two costs together. So we've got 20% times 0 plus 40% uh, times 1 plus 30% times 2 plus 10% times 3 gives us the average expected number of no-shows at 1.3. So the expected cost of no overbooking with these no-shows is 1.3 times the $50 profit we would have earned is $65 per night is our cost of expected cost of no overbooking. That's lost revenue. But if we take our plan that we had on the previous page, and if we overbook by one room, the associated costs are these. First of all, we're going to have overbooking costs. If we overbook by one room and everybody shows up, there's zero no-shows, with the probability of 
We've got one overbooked times 20% times $100 cost of overbooking. Our expected cost per night of overbooking is $20. And added to that is the lost revenues. Perhaps we're not overbooking enough. So if we overbook by one and one no-shows, that's perfect. There's no associated cost with that. But if we have two no-shows, so we've got uh, one overbook, or if we have three no-shows, and we've overbooked by one, we've got two overbooked, and the associated probability is 0.3 and 0.1, okay, times the uh, lost revenue, in that case, 50% or $50, since we didn't overbook, okay, we've got lost that revenue since we didn't overbook, is $25. So when we add these two together, our lost revenue is 45. So again, we've got the overbooking cost. In this case, we had two. Um, we had one over. We had we decided to overbook by one, and we had zero no-shows, so we incurred a cost of one room overbooked. And the probability that's 20 percent. And here we had the cost of lost revenue, where we over overbooked by one, and uh, two did not show up. And in this case, three did not show up, so we lost our revenue, expected revenue of $25. Added together, the total cost of overbooking with this plan is $45. So taking the difference between the 65 and the 45, 65 and the 45, you can see that the average savings per night is $20 if we overbook by one. So that's the optimal plan with this example, overbook by one. Now, the problem with overbooking is that there are some hidden costs associated with overbooking. And you need to make sure that you incorporate those hidden costs into that C sub O, the cost of overbooking. For example, the transportation. Somehow you've got to get those customers uh, over to that next hotel where they'll be staying. Then there's lost revenue. A customer who has been bumped or overbooked <clears throat> is likely not to return to your hotel or your hotel chain, so you'll lose future revenue from that client. Likewise, there's uh, lower employee morale, because these employees have to tell the overbooked customer that they've been overbooked. And some chains tell their employees to lie to the customer and say, oh, well, the plumbing just broke in the room, or we had too many guests stay over, and that's the reason why your room is not available. So that lowers employee morale, because they have to lie and they have to take the grief from the customer, which results in high employee turnover, which increases your costs your employee training costs. And then there's the iceberg effect. <clears throat> one customer who's happy with a hotel will likely tell one or two people that they were happy with their visit in that chain. One person who's unhappy and has been bumped because of overbooking is likely to tell hundreds or thousands of people that they're not happy with that chain and that there's an overbooking policy in effect. So you'll lose even more future revenue because all of their friends are not likely to uh, book at that hotel. So if we, in this example, say we have the cost of overbooking is actually $250 instead of $100, putting that into the formula, we get 1.6 or 0.167. So in this example, you would not overbook with a true cost of overbooking of $250. I got bumped one time from Enterprise Rent-A-Car and found the site failedenterprise.com and found out that Enterprise has a book no-look policy. They don't honor their reservations, or at least they haven't in the past. That caused the iceberg effect. The person started up the failed Enterprise site and has uh, resulted in thousands of customers reading about Enterprise and their uh, overbooking policy. Um, so they do not honor reservations in general, and they'll make you sit down there and wait for your car to come in. In fact, what they told me on the phone is that they were suffering a delay. And I asked, well, where is my car? I had a reservation. And they said, well, we gave your car to a customer who had a car accident, which was probably a lie, thus lowering employee morale even further. 